Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In the last video I did on delegates, I gave a basic understanding and example of how you could use them. In this video, I want to go over a real-world example and a real situation that lets you use delegates as callbacks for your methods and your coroutines. So what I have here is an image with an image from web script on it. This is responsible for putting an image into this big image right here. So grabbing a website picture, in fact, one straight from my site, and putting it into there. And then I have an image loader script, and this is actually responsible for doing the work of loading or downloading the image. So I'm gonna press play, show you what it looks like real quick, and then we'll jump into the code. So here you go, it just replaces that image right there. Now let's look at the script on the image first. So image from web just has a string for an image path, which is where we define where the image will come from. And then we find the image loader by using find object of type. This could be a singleton, but for this sample, it doesn't matter. And then we launch a coroutine. The coroutine is image loader .load image, and we pass in the image path, and we pass in replace image. And if you look down here, you'll see replace image is a method. So this is being used, we're passing it in for a delegate, and then this image loader is gonna call into our replace image when it's done. So let's take a look at the load image method and again it's an IE numerator because we're using it for a coroutine. It takes in a path and then an action of type texture 2D. Again this could also be a delegate if we use the longer syntax that's available and you see that in the other video but I really prefer just using an action with the generics. It feels a lot cleaner most of the time and we call this on complete because we're going to call this when the load image is complete. So since load image is kind of asynchronous using a coroutine and we yield return on our www request, we want to wait until it's done before we actually call the code to update the texture. And now what gets called here can vary. So in our first sample there, we're just replacing a texture in the image, but we could also do some other things. Let's take a look at this one more time though, the replace image that we're passing in. Here we just get a rectangle for the, um, the texture width and height, and then we create a sprite for that. So that's what's updating there. But you may have noticed if we go back to the scene, we also have a local image saver, and this is doing something a little bit different. It's reusing the loader.load image functionality. So again, we just cache a reference to the loader here, or we grab one, and then we call start coroutine on load image and pass in the path. But here we're calling save image instead of the um, replace image, which in the save image is just writing all of the data. So it's writing this picture into a PNG. It's called save texture. In fact, it'll go right into this folder. So I'm gonna stop showing the code and press play and let's watch what happens in this downloads folder too. So I press play, pop that up. Oh, there we go. And you can see it did both of these things. Now the nice part here is that the image loader doesn't care what you do with the image it just lets you say hey go do go load the image and then do this thing once you're done call this method and pass in that image when you're done the image loader can stay relatively generic we could also swap it out we could have different types of image loaders and using the same functionality we could pass in these same delegates as long as the uh the method structure is the same we could pass in the same delegates and then load them a completely different way and have the code all be the same with the results and it's just nice and easy to swap it it keeps things clean and pretty separated and it's a really powerful system once you get used to using it so if you have a situation where you're running some code and you want to wait until something's done and then do something else think about it for a moment before you build the whole system up and consider using delegates as callbacks in there and see if it's maybe a cleaner, easier solution. It won't always be, but sometimes it is. So it's worth knowing about and it's worth trying out. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments and thanks for watching.